The maximum allowable supply is 18 volt and VCC ranges between 5 to 15 volts. The power dissipation capacity for SOIC and PDIP packages varies from 613 milliwatt to 1180 milliwatt. This IC can operate in temperature range from 0 degree centigrade to 70 degree centigrade. This is the schematic diagram of IC555, which consists of resistor, diode and transistor. This is the block diagram of IC555. This segment in the schematic diagram is the threshold comparator, which you can see here. The next is the trigger comparator, which you can see here. There is a voltage dividing network of 3 5 kilo ohm resistors. Finally, there is flip-flop, output stage and discharge transistor and all these things you can see into the block diagram of IC555. Now let's understand IC555 through its block diagram. The voltage divider circuit is made up of 3 5 kilo ohm resistor which is why it is named as IC555. The voltage divider is connected to VCC and ground. Here point A and B are connected to the threshold and trigger comparator respectively. These comparators are made up of idle op-amp and that is why we can assume that there is no current flow through the comparator. If you want to learn how the comparator works then you can refer my video on op-amp as comparator. There I have explained the operation of comparator with simulation. The link of the video is in description box below and here in i button. So by applying voltage divider rule we can get voltage at both the points A and B. This is how you get voltage at point A as 2 by 3 VCC and at point B it's 1 by 3 VCC. Both these reference voltages are given to the comparator. The next stage is comparator. A comparator is a device that compares both the input and gives you output according to which input is higher. For example, if input to non-inverting terminal is 9 volt and inverting terminal is 2 volt. The positive terminal is at higher voltage level than the negative terminal, which results in the digital output state high or 1. Or if the input to positive terminal is lower than the negative terminal, it will result in digital output state low or 0. Using threshold, trigger, reference point A, point B, and control voltage, we can control the comparator's output and then this output is given to the flip-flop. So the next stage in our this video is flip-flop. But before moving ahead, I would like to request you to give a like to this video. In IC555, a SR flip-flop or you can call it as RS flip-flop, it is used. There are two inputs to the flip-flop, set and reset. When the input to SR flip-flop is 1 and 0, irrespective of the previous condition, the output will reset to state 1 or the output will be 1 and 0. Now if the input is 0 and 1, then irrespective of the previous condition, the output will set to state 0 or we can call it as output will be 0 and 1. But in any case, if both the input is 0, then output will not change. It will reflect its previous state in the output. And what if both the inputs are 1? Actually in this condition, the output is undefined. Practically, we are interested in first two conditions only. At any point of time, if we want to reset the flip-flop, then reset pin can be used for that purpose. Now the next stage is output. The Q bar terminal of flip-flop is connected to the output block. This block is basically an inverter, which inverts the output from flip-flop. It gives output 0 if the Q bar is 1 and it gives 1 if the Q bar is 0. The output pin number 3 can sink and source 200 milliampere of current. The use of this inverter results in the same output at pin number 3 as it would be at Q output point of RS flip-flop or SR flip-flop. So this is how the signal is processed in IC555 from input to output. But one section is still remains and that is the discharging transistor. The Q bar is also connected to discharging transistor. When Q bar is 1, it activates the discharging transistor resulting 
in some action depending upon the external circuit arrangement. In upcoming sections, I will tell you how this is being used. So till now, if you have any question about IC555, you can write here in comments or you can discuss it with me on my Telegram and Instagram page. The link of this account is in description box below. And yeah, you can motivate me by subscribing to this channel and by liking to this video. And what is the result if I get motivated? This video is the result of my previous motivation. So keep me motivated and I'll make such wonderful videos for you. Now this IC555 can be operated in three modes. Monostable mode, bistable mode and a stable mode. So now in this video, we'll go through the working of all these three modes, monostable, bistable and A stable. So first of all, we'll start with the example of monostable mode of operation. Monostable multivibrator can be used in delay circuits, timing circuits, temporary memory, square wave generation and many more applications. So here, this is the circuit for monostable multivibrator where R1 and R2 resistor, C capacitor and S1 switch are connected in this manner. Pin number 8 is VCC which is connected to 12 volt of supply and pin 1 is actually ground and which is connected to ground. This arrangement will result into 8 volt and 4 volt of reference voltage at threshold and trigger comparator respectively. The inverting terminal of trigger comparator is connected to the supply through R2 resistor resulting in 12 volt at inverting terminal of trigger comparator. So looking at this condition, it's clear that the output of trigger comparator will be zero. Now in case of threshold comparator, inverting terminal is at 8 volt reference. The output depends upon the voltage at non-inverting terminal. So let's have a case where Q and Q bar are zero and one. This will activate the discharge transistor which will result in very low voltage, ideally zero voltage at non-inverting terminal of the threshold comparator. The voltage drop across the transistor will be the voltage at threshold pin. This will result in less voltage at positive terminal and more voltage at negative terminal of threshold comparator. So this gives zero in output of threshold comparator. Now, we remember when both the inputs of flip-flop is zero, it will not make any change in output. In short, it will reflect its previous state in output. So it will stay as it is. In order to change the output of IC555, we need to close switch S1. This will ground the negative terminal of trigger comparator. So it will get zero voltage at negative terminal and four volt at positive terminal. As a result, the output will change from 0 to 1. This will cause set condition to the flip-flop and the output will be 1 and 0. So 0 at Q bar will turn off the discharging transistor. So now the capacitor will start charging through the R1 resistor. The voltage we will get at positive terminal of threshold comparator will be equal to the voltage across capacitor. Meanwhile, switch S1 will be again in open position negative terminal of trigger comparator will be again connected to the 12 volt through R2 resistance. This will result in zero output of trigger comparator. Now both the inputs to flip-flop is zero. This will cause no change in output of flip-flop. Meanwhile, the capacitor will keep on charging through R1 resistance. Till the capacitor reaches to two-third of VCC voltage, the IC555 will remain in the same state only. Once it reaches 2 by 3 VCC, the voltage at positive terminal will be more than the voltage at negative terminal. This will change the output of threshold comparator from 0 to 1. Now, the input to flip-flop is 0, 1. This will set the output of flip-flop to 0 and 1. This will cause the output of IC goes to 0 and 1 at Q bar activates the discharging transistor. The capacitor again starts discharging. Once the capacitor voltage reduces below 2 by 3 VCC, the output of comparator goes to 0. But as both the input to flip-flop is 0, it will stay in the same condition. So this is how we get one pulse at output in monostable mode of operation. The monostable multivibrator has only one stable state and that's why it is named as monostable multivibrator.
when a trigger signal is applied it will go in unstable state this will last till the capacitor reaches two third vcc voltage level then after again it will come back to its original state the time of output being in high condition will be decided by the time to charge capacitor to its two third vcc voltage the time depends on the value of capacitor as well as resistor because the capacitor is charged through r1 resistor so the time for capacitor to charge to reach 2 by 3 vcc voltage will be given as t is equal to 1.1 into r1 into c so this is the mono stable mode of operation of ic555 hey if you think that this is helpful for you then please like to this video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and if you want to do simulation of mono stable mode of operation then check out my video in multisim playlist the link will be in description box below if you want to download the simulation file then stay in this video i will tell you from where to download the simulation file so the next is by stable mode of operation it can be used as storage device latch counter frequency divider and more so here this is the circuit of by stable multi vibrator where r1 and r2 resistance and s1 and s2 switch are connected in this manner initially both the comparator is at zero output stage and the flip flop is at zero and one condition this will result in zero output of ic555 when we push switch s2 it will result in change of state of trigger comparator and the output becomes one this will change the input condition of flip flop and as a result the output changes from 1 to 0 so finally causes change to the output of ic555 and makes it 1 or in a high state the output will stay in the same state until we push switch s1 meanwhile when we open the switch s2 ic will still remain in the same condition because after opening of switch s2 both the inputs of flip flop is zero and that will not cause any change to the output when we push switch s1 it will activate the reset flip flop and the output will again go back to 0 and 1 which will result into the output of ic555 to 0 or the low state thus in by stable mode of operation we have two stable states when we push switch s2 in that condition the output goes to high state and remains in that condition only but when we press switch s1 the output comes back to zero condition and this is how it operates in by stable mode of operation hey can you turn a white thumbs up button just below this video into black just try it once i'll appreciate if you can do that thing and one more thing if you want to do the simulation of by stable mode of operation then check out my video in multisim playlist the link will be in description box below if you want to download the simulation file then stay in this video i'll tell you from where to download the simulation file and the next section in this video is a stable mode of operation in a stable multi vibrator both the states are not stable and keeps on changing at regular interval it can be used as wave generation frequency modulation relaxation oscillator and many more the combination of r1 r2 resistor and c1 c2 capacitor are connected in this manner initially assume that the capacitor c1 is completely discharged so now through r1 and r2 resistor capacitor will starts charging during this phase the voltage at negative terminal of trigger comparator is less than the positive terminal this will gives us one in output of comparator whereas the same voltage is given to the positive terminal of threshold comparator which is less than the 2/3 of vcc this will result in zero output of comparator this 1 and 0 input to the flip flop will result in 1 and 0 output of flip flop if you have any doubt about truth table of flip flop then you can refer the truth table which i have shared earlier in this video q bar zero state will result to one or higher state in the output of ic555 once the voltage across c1 capacitor increases up to 1/3 of vcc the output of trigger comparator will goes to zero but this zero zero condition will not make any change in the output thus the output of ic555 will still remains in the same state or in the high state 
once the voltage across C1 capacitor increases 2 by 3 Vcc voltage, it will change the output of threshold comparator from 0 to 1. Now this combination of 0 and 1 inputs will set the output of flip flop to 0 and 1. This will activate the discharging transistor and make the output of IC555 to 0. This will start discharging of C1 capacitor to R2 resistance. Once the voltage across C1 capacitor goes below 2 by 3 Vcc, it will make the output of threshold comparator 0. As both the input of flip flop is 0, this will not make any change in output. The voltage across C1 capacitor still keeps on reducing. Once it goes below 1 by 3 Vcc, the output of trigger comparator will change from 0 to 1. This 1 and 0 input to flip flop will set 1 and 0 in output condition. Once the Q bar is 0, the discharging transistor will turn off and the output of IC555 will again raise back to 1 or high state. In a stable multivibrator, both the states are unstable. Once the voltage across C1 capacitor reaches 2 by 3 Vcc, the output will go to 0 and then the capacitor starts discharging. Once it reaches 1 by 3 Vcc, the output will again go back to 1 condition. This will keep on happening and gives us pulses or square wave in output. One cycle of the square wave can be found using this equation. F is equal to 1 by 0 0.693 into R1 plus R2 into C1. The complete cycle has two sections, T on and T off and together it will become T is equal to T on plus T off. During T on period, the capacitor gets charged through R1 and R2 resistor and during T off period, it will discharge through R2 resistor. So the equation of on and on time are T on is equal to 0 0.693 into R1 plus R2 into C1 and T off is equal to 0 0.693 into R2 into C1. So by changing the magnitude of R1 and R2 resistor, we can control on and off time of square waves. This is very useful while adjusting the duty cycle of PWM signals. So this is how IC555 works in a stable mode of operation. So now, if you have enjoyed this tutorial, then like this video and subscribe to this channel. You can write me in comments if you want to ask anything about this topic. Now this time, I am going to tell you how to download the simulation file. I have uploaded the simulation file to my telegram page and you can join me in that telegram and download that file from telegram page. The link of the page is in description box below. So until we meet again in our next video, till the time, bye bye.